Hi everyone, I am Jillian Barry and I'm very excited about today's video. We're going to be talking to Kara Brotman from the Healthy Life channel on YouTube. She is a raw chef and her son Giuliano. They are amazing and they did a video on Kara's channel about toxic relationships which really struck a chord with me. In my opinion, it's one of the best videos on this subject matter I've ever seen. So I will link that below. And I wanted to expand on that today on my channel here, because to me, being healthy is not just about the food you eat. It's also about the relationships you surround yourself with. So let's get started. Hi, Kara. Hi, Juliano. How are you today? Hi, sweetheart. Very good. Thanks. Thanks for having us. And thank you for having us. Thank you both so much for doing this. You're both just a delight and I'm so excited to talk to you. You're both so well-spoken on this subject and you both offer so much wisdom. I just, it's amazing. That's Thank why I'm excited know. to be here because we want to impart what we have learned and experienced with others who may not, you know, who may need help. And what I loved about this video was, I love how you made it very clear how important it is with toxic relationships to completely cut them off because I know it's so easy for me in the past I've gone back time and time again I've had some pretty toxic relationships in my life and maybe because of them I've also been the toxic person at times not anymore but it's very easy to go back to the relationship think it's going to change think you can make it work think the person will be more loving and that you can fix it so it's nice in your video it was nice because most of the time these people don't change and I think it is a better life when you do just make the decision to cut these people out of your life. Part of us want to stay connected with them even though it's in a sick way. You know, we know they're bad. We know that they drain our energy and fill us with anger and emotion and you know negative emotions. I have a quick story. One day my mother was at my sister's house. And she had a, a husband and a five-year-old daughter. My son was there as well, me and my mother. All of us from her, her five-year-old or six-year-old daughter to her husband, to me, to my son, to her, we're all, ah! it was because my mom was just, remember that day, Juliana, when she was there and our moods were just so ugly. We're just, ah. And if something makes you feel that way, we must understand, get away from it. Even a single celled amoeba moves away from something that causes it pain. Mm -hmm. It causes it us pain and stress. Why do we continue to go back? That is what we have to examine. It's something so minor. If we don't participate in it, it can't continue. If we block their number from our cell phone, if we block their email, if we do not go over to their house, if we don't allow them to come to our house, it can't continue. Juliano, do you have anything to add? I mean, it's it's great to block them and you know make sure you remove yourself from that relationship, but it doesn't matter you know, how many times you block them. It's, it's really about in the mental state where you got to know, I, I cannot continue this relationship. I mean, you really don't have to block somebody. Uh, if you have the willpower to just not speak to them and you know, I'm not going to speak to this person. I know that this person is not good for me. Then you can see their text and just, you know, freely go, okay, I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to look at that. It, it, it's, really a mindset because so many times I've seen people they go I'm blocking this person I will never speak to them again and then all you got to do is just find their number and unblock it or if you don't have their number find somebody who does have their number and then just get their number back it's just so easy to say oh I'm going to block this person and then think you've done the deed of removing them for your life until finally something comes up in your head and then you go oh I want to speak to this person again or oh I think it might be time or I had a feeling and then you go and you find their number and you talk to them and then everything goes bad. So blocking them is, is great, but just make sure that you also are ready to drop that relationship and you have that in your, in your heart and your mind and in your soul. And I wouldn't do it out of anger and out of strong emotion because when you jump to this conclusion that, oh, I'm going to block this person for sure, you, when you do it with that much quick emotion, I feel like it's, it's so easy to calm down and then you think, ah, maybe I jumped to conclusion. So really don't, don't act when you're, uh, when you're kind of too much in your feelings, I would, I would really think about it and go, okay, I feel like I should block this person. 
let me calm down and then, you know, kind of reevaluate that decision and see, do I still want to do that? And when you do it with more of a clear mind, I feel like you have more of a chance to, to really help yourself and make that decision. Is this somebody that I actually want to block or is this somebody that I am willing to work with? That, that's what I would add to that. I agree. I think sometimes you can regret things when you make decisions from that bad place and from being super emotional. And I just want to say too, like toxic relationships, they, they don't have to be a mother, father, sister, brother, like they can be anything, family, friends, coworkers, people you surround yourself, your friends, I mean, anything, right? Food, absolutely. addiction. Yeah, absolutely. Food, yeah. did you say? Yeah. And I think uh, too, a big reason why a lot of people have problems with food and food problems does stem from toxic relationships. Oh, absolutely. And you know what, there's something going back to what Kara was talking about too, like with relationships growing up and stuff like that, there was something I heard the other day that was really good. Somebody said like, like in a way they can be addictive too, right? You crave them because somebody said you crave what you had growing up and you also crave what you didn't have growing up absolutely yeah it's just yeah it's so true and I love how I love how in the video you guys did too you made it so clear how important it is to surround yourself with people who don't drain you so I mean it's a toxic person it, you feel like your energy is just drained after you hang out with them right you don't feel recharged and refreshed yeah and that's not a that's not a relationship you want to be in that's not a great that you know we're the way I look at it, what gives me strength to keep these people out of my life is, you know, I'm only here on this beautiful planet one time around for all I know. I want to enjoy it, you know, with people that aren't going to bring me down, cause me stress, pressure, you know, make me feel bad, call me stupid, Mm -hmm. you know, or, 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 or want things from me or want to manipulate me, you know, the, that's why I have such a small circle of friends and not friends, you know, it's just, you know, my son, Marcus, my, you know, partner, he's my business partner, my friend. Um, it's just, you know, it's hard. It's hard. But uh, again, you just tell yourself, how do I want to spend now till, you know, I die happy. I want to be happy. Some people don't. And those toxic people, they don't want to be happy. I think they've been, they've asked themselves, how do I want to live my life and make others feel miserable mm -hmm. or happy? I choose miserable. Mm -hmm. And they look for any reason to be angry or get upset. And I don't want to be around those people. And my mother is just scratching her head wondering, why doesn't she want to talk to me? And the reason is because I hear how just downright miserable she is and negative and always looking for a reason to yell or fight, you know, when she has no idea how good she has it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, and I don't want to be, they don't deserve my time. And you know how I dealt with her before I officially broke up with her? She she had the power when I was a child all the way up till my twenties, it was always her, her. And then I came into my own and I became independent and my own thinker and pretty powerful on my own. And she knew that. So now I had the power and she was the weakling. And every time she would get upset or try and call me stupid in my older years, like just up to a few years ago, I'd say, I'm leaving because it would always be at her house. I'd visit her and I'd go, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. And she'd go, oh, wait. And she, I could never do that. I never had that weapon in my arsenal before. But that's a good idea if you guys are having problems and you don't, you know, you're addicted to this parent or friend, then train them. Mm -hmm. If it's hard for you to let them go, train them how to treat you. If they start draining your energy, if they start screaming and pressuring you or manipulating you, say, oh, I'm out of here. I see what you're doing. I don't feel good. I'm out of here. And, you know, then they'll be like, oh, my God, I can't do that to them anymore. You know, you can't get away. Train them. What do you do? I did, but eventually I had to get away. 
what do you like what do you guys think what do you recommend if a toxic person reaches out to you like a relationship that was toxic in the past and they reach out to you like how do you respond to that like does she ever try to reach out to you Kara? um yes she has an emails but you can't erase the past and as a, as far as abusive parents go you have to tell yourself that you have no moral obligation to them mm -hmm. they've torn up that 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 uh, um, privilege of having you as a friend, as an adult. And I am so emotional over this because I hear parents that are, I don't know why my ch adult children don't talk to me. And I could tell you why, because I bet you uh, my bottom dollar, you are a terrible parent to them. Because if you were a loving parent, like I was to my son, no, nobody could um, convince you that you're a terrible to them. This is what I hear a lot. Yeah, my ex-husband just said that, convinced my adult children what a horrible um, mother I am, what a horrible person, and now they don't talk to me. Nobody could convince my, they tried to do the same to my son, as some of my toxic family members. Yeah. They tried to tell him all his life, your mother's a terrible mother. One day you're going to realize this and hate her. Right, non same thing before, yeah. But it, yeah. but you can't. It, it, you have to to you know if you had a good relationship, if your mother was good to you, you'd love her, and you know you'd be there for him. Okay, my father, he was so loving to me, always there, the best parent in the world. Guess what? When he was there in in his time of need, dying, his last three months of life, guess who was there for him? Mm -hmm. Me, uh, round the clock, twenty four seven because he was there for me my entire life. Now, my mother, I don't want to say this, but she's in ill health. And you know what? Guess who's not there for her? Mm -hmm. Me. Mm -hmm. I don't, she doesn't deserve me. And I don't deserve that seeing the pain of a parent of mine suffering. Because even though she was terrible to me, I don't want to see her suffer like this and mm -hmm. struggle for her air. Mm -hmm. It was bad enough seeing my father like that. But you know what? he deserves me to see him like that. It was an honor for me to see him and take care of him in every way that he needed his last three months. My mother, she doesn't deserve it. And there's no guilt. I did nothing wrong. I was a wonderful child to her. I was a wonderful adult child to her. She still took advantage and manipulated in this. I even gave her a chance when I came into my own and realized what a horrible person she was. I still gave her a chance and she failed me. See, I so, think with toxic relationships, sometimes I, like, sometimes I made mistakes where I thought, how dare you act this way, right? And I would lash out and then essentially become a toxic person, I guess, right? Because I would start telling them off, how can you be like this? And then let it affect my energy and swear and just go off. And I don't do that now, but in the past, it's so easy when you've had, like, toxic relationships to get your pain body triggered and react and I know Giuliano you said a great thing in the video you guys did about how when you're confronted with the situation to write things down like write a letter you guys write a letter write your feelings down and like don't send it to them but sometimes mm -hmm. but if your pain body you just get triggered so easy from traumas you've been through that like do you guys have any other advice for people who get triggered easy to react or maybe they don't have time to go find a pen and paper and write a letter you know what I mean absolutely I've are, are, you, are you talking about like a situation where if someone you're you're actually talking on the phone or like if you're in person with them like, come on like, like you seen to go I on a situation where it's a toxic relationship and the person has gone around and spread a lot of lies about me so I tried to make this relationship work in the not so distant past and said what about these lies and then the person just started calling me names saying it's not true they didn't do that but I knew they did and just started calling me inappropriate names and stuff I have mental issues all this and I just felt like I felt angry right I felt triggered by it I mean yeah. you know so well, I, I was in a, uh, a similar situation um, with a friend and uh, you know we, we all had the same circle and he would um, he would definitely trigger me and I didn't realize he was toxic because you know people argue but he I would notice that you know he would make me feel 
like drained afterwards. And I would feel like I, I would second guess myself. And, you know, I do have a business now and it's, you know, far more successful than, it, than I expected it to be. But, um, you know, four or five years ago when I was friends with this person, I was just starting it and he, um, he just, he would always make me feel terrible about it. And he'd t say how stupid I was and what a terrible idea this is to, to try. And, and then eventually it went to him starting to spread rumors and say lies about me. And um, it got to the point where I didn't even, I just knew that I didn't want this person in my life. And I didn't care what he said about me, although it did infuriate me because they, you know, they were hundred percent lies mm -hmm. and it was attacking my character. And, um, and you know, that's, that's who we are as people. We have our character. That's what we've built to create. Mm -hmm. But I figured, you know what, I'm just going to completely cut this person out of my life. The few people who I know that he's told these things to, I'm just going to let them know straight off the bat. You know, this is, that was absolutely not the case. You can think what you will, you know me. So at the end of the day, it, it, even if I am that person, what you see me as, yeah. that's what you should judge me by, not by what somebody says about me. Um, first of all, and secondly, I am I'm not speaking to this person anymore. I'm not going to argue with him. And I told him, listen, uh, he, you know, he accused me of something. I go, I, I'm going to tell you right now, that's not the case. Um, I'm sorry you feel that way. But what I'm going to do is just end this relationship since you feel that this is the case. And I feel that it's not what I want to do is make it so neither one of us feel this insane anger towards each other anymore. So I'm just going to completely cut this off. You have a wonderful life. Thank you so much for your friendship, but um, I can't continue this and you shouldn't continue it either. And I won't let you continue this. And I won't keep myself in your life for both my sake and your sake. And, um, you know, I, I let, I kind of spoke that through a ton of rage and I let my rage come out as that, just being as absolute blunt as possible, but at the same time, trying to be calm and uh, you know, etiquette about things. Although I did want to just absolutely lose my mind and explode and tell everybody that's not true. He's a liar. He did this. He did that. But the mm -hmm. more you engage, the longer you let that that toxic pain keep it alive. Mm -hmm. So you know, and like you said, you you want to lash out, and it turns you toxic. Mm -hmm. That that was well said because that's what happens with these toxic people. Mm -hmm. It's it kind of goes back to the old saying: misery loves company. Mm -hmm. And they are miserable and they see your happiness and your shine and your radiance. And that's something that you have to think about when you are dealing with toxic relationships. You are shining and you need to protect that luster of, of who you are. And these people will do anything that they can to bring you down. And when you get angry and you want to snap, just think I could snap and yell at this person. But what would make them more upset and give me more power and control over the situation would be if I didn't snap and I showed how amazing I am and I let my light shine instead of my anger because that is far more effective in dealing with these toxic relationships and it is more difficult though but um, if, if you're in a situation like that where you can't just grab a pen and paper mm -hmm. you know just remember that you're you're good and resisting that toxic attitude and the toxic energy right away that's going to be far more powerful. And then also you don't want to do what a lot of people seem to cycle that they get into. It's they're cooperating. They're getting into fights. They're allowing other people to pick fights with them and they're cooperating with that. And then they're later complaining about that person, the person that they're getting into a fight with every time. That's who they are. Mm -hmm. Uh, wh why should we complain about them or say, aren't they, that everyone knows they're a terrible person. Yeah. But I think you're the one who should be, you know, looking at examining yourself because you're talking to that cuckoo, that crazy person, you know, that toxic person. D you know, I, I, I've heard my sister complain about her husband for years and, and he does this. I can you believe how terrible he is if he does this? He is who he is, you know, you picked him. Yeah. You're the one who has the problem, you know? And yeah. also people need to also listen to these red flags before they uh, fall in love with toxic people if they're, you know, spouses. There's these red flags and I don't know why people don't, no, I don't know why they ignore it. It's so easy not to, you just tell yourself, oh my God, that person just, 
like this guy did. He just looked at those college men. He looked at these college boys that were walking down the street. The guy I flirted with. He worked at the store next door to where I worked. And these college boys were walking down the street and he looked at them and he goes, what are you, what are you looking at? And then he looks at me because I was so taken aback and he goes, I'm just kidding. Oh, wow. I, I said, oh yeah, right. And I never, like, I, I never not spoke to him, but I quickly kind of cut that relationship completely. But he gave me a little peek unbeknownst to what he wanted and to what my future was going to look like full of jealousy, mm -hmm. anger, and rage. Mm -hmm. But all I've seen for the past month was a sweet man, you know, but uh, thank God he showed me that red flag. People should love these red flags and True. run. True. I want to say too, I really admire you because you grew up with such toxic relationships. Yet now you have such a beautiful relationship with your son. So I want to ask you, have you done anything to heal the trauma, like the traumatic relationships and the toxic relationships? What would you recommend for somebody who wants to heal it? Because it's beautiful, the relationship you have. And a lot of times the odds are the relationship would maybe be toxic between the mother and children. And the well, I'm not, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, you know, I've been blessed that I always say, thank God I had a loving father, even though he was gone most of the day, like I'd see him briefly, he works six days a week, 14 hours, 15 hours a day. But when I would see him, he would give me love. And I always said, my God, if I didn't have my father and this woman raised me, I am so afraid of what type of person I'd be but no basically I also I I, I just it's some uh, advice protect yourself you are the you do have yourself you know sometimes we don't have anybody or we think we don't have anybody I've thought I was so alone in some of my teen years on my own at 16 years old so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know anything. So I did nothing mm -hmm. except protect myself. I didn't get involved in relationships. I didn't let men take advantage of me. I knew that if any man talked to me, he was just, you know, selfish and wanted, you know, to exploit me in some way for his own gain. And mm -hmm. I don't know why, you know, I learned from others' mistakes, you know, as a teenager, I'd see my girlfriends get into such precarious situations. And I'm like, with guys, like going to California from Las Vegas with strangers. And I'm like, don't they have common sense? Why would they do that? I don't know. You know, again, it's going back to just ask yourself, how do I want to feel? Because I know this person is going to make me feel miserable. And again, some people want to feel miserable. I don't understand it try feeling good it's a it's an yeah. amazing feeling plus it's healthy for you it's good for your body it's good for your health your mind happiness and I think eating good like that's for me so I started eating all raw raw vegan about four years ago and that's when everything really started to change like that's when my relationships really started to change you know my vibration lifted and I you start loving yourself more when you take care of yourself right and then yeah. you you, re you wake up a bit more and realize what's going on. Like this is super toxic, this relationship, this relationship and things start changing. I know I've had a huge change in relationships the last few years from changing how I eat and take care of myself. Absolutely. Uh, you can't tell me that uh, an animal that has been known pain of being torn from its mother, separated from her, abused, grown, just tortured, then terrified seeing what his fate is when he sees the fellow cow in front of him get split and then it's packaged sent home mm -hmm. and you and you eat that you that eat energy. that that fear that torture yes that energy and it's you beautiful. don't feel anything you're kidding me that's why I truly feel there's like a plethora of children with behavioral problems ADD out of control, night terrors, ah, I've always said this and I see that it was written. Finally, somebody wrote it, but boy, it's taken a decade at least I've been thinking about this. 
the cortisol in our bodies, when we're stressed, the cortisol levels raise. Well, that is something, the cortisol, it is something, it, it, it's, it's blood, it's nerve, it's everything in our, in our tissues and in our meat. And it's not good. And when we eat that, we're eating that unhealthy substance. And it's affecting our body. Everything we eat either negatively or positively affects it. That's why I want to make sure everything I eat is of course vegan, mm -hmm. but organic and mm -hmm. as close to non people, as few people touching it as possible. Mm -hmm. I love to make my own food and prepare it. I don't like prepackaged anything, but you know, like vegan A's, olive mm -hmm. oil. But everything, 85% of my grocery cart is in the produce oil aisle. I need to do a video on that. <laughs> yeah, same here. Good and for you. I can tell you look wonderful. Thank you. I feel really great. I feel really good. And it's been a crazy couple of years. Like I said, so many relationships have changed. I've gone through a divorce, moved from Costa Rica back to Toronto, lost everything, lost a lot of like close relationships. But I swear, eating well, taking care of myself, like it's what's really got me through, you know? Thank God. Yes. yes. And I feel like the best is yet to come. I just, I feel positive and good. Oh, yes. You have your whole life ahead of you, you yes. angel. I'm very happy for you. You're off in the right direction. Thank you. That, that, that should give you a feel of empowerment, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's, and confidence, you know, look how strong you are. Look how far you've come. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kara. Good for you. There's one other thing that I love from your video with Giuliano that I want to bring up. And I know you're a successful entrepreneur, business owner. I love how you said um, how important it is with business to surround yourself with the right people and not talk to people. And you don't realize how much those people can affect your business. And I think you're so right. If you're surrounded by the wrong people, you can literally let it crush your dreams and not go to where you're meant to go, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, when you have this idea, um, a lot of the times you realize who your friends are, or you realize a lot about people's attitudes and, and personalities when you express a dream and you hear who goes, wow, good job, go for it. I'm so happy to hear that. And then the other people who go, ah, oh, that's a stupid idea. You'll never make it. You're wasting your time. You're an idiot. And, you know, they, a lot of the times these people aren't even trying to be mean or toxic or they're not coming from a place of negativity they're coming from a place of you know genuine support and care and and they're trying to let you know this is a bad idea don't do it but they can't just sit there and say this is a bad idea well, a rule that i love is um criticism without uh suggestion is useless um it, it, it basically if you criticize somebody for something don't sit there and just say, you're an idiot, that's a bad idea. And expect them to go, okay, thanks for that advice. No, you, you're supposed to say, you're an idiot, that's a bad idea. Here's what you here's can do why. instead. Here's how you could improve that. Or here's some suggestions. Here, let me, let me help suggest something else to you. Um, you have to create a dialogue. And if somebody's sitting there breaking you down and draining you when you're trying to have a, a form of business, I've had it happen to me. You know, they say success is a road paved with failures mm -hmm. and I've had a series of failures unbelievable amounts and the thing is you just got to keep going and there's so many businesses in the past that I've tried to open that I actually haven't opened because I've let people around me kind of dictate my emotions and I noticed that wow this person's really bringing me down and not you start doubting yourself yourself you're in such a sensitive situation or such a such a sensitive state of mind when you're creating this business and you are really vulnerable to the things that you surround yourself with. So when somebody's sitting there saying, hey, that might not work, you're already doubting yourself. Um, I read a ton of self-help books and um, entrepreneurial books and business books. And what a lot of them say is, if you're not doubting yourself every single day when you're opening your business, you're not doing something right. Mm -hmm. You should, every day you wake up, you should be thinking, am I doing this right? I'm, I have, I'm spending barely any time with friends. I have no uh, relationship in my love life. Mm -hmm. I am not enjoying any of my hobbies. I'm sacrificing everything. Is this worth it? Is this really the right idea? Am I, am I doing the right thing? And yes, you are. 
you know, you got to keep pushing through to your dream. It's, it's hard. Nothing worthwhile is, is easy, you know? So you got to keep pushing when somebody's sitting there saying, no, you are wrong. You, you're bad. They're really affecting your decision. So it's vital to you and your business and your growth. If you expect to build an empire that you say, Hey, I can't have you in my life. I need to make sure that someone in my life is sitting there cheering me on mm -hmm. and not trying to bring me down because I need as much support as I can get right now. This is a very delicate time in my life. When you're building something, it's like a baby being born. I, can, I compare my business to a baby all the time. And when a baby's inside the womb, it needs to be taken care of and coddled. And that is what you have to do to your business. You can't sit there and have people around your baby who are, who, who are abusing it or who are doubting it. Don't have intentions. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that's definitely um, extremely important. I mean, look at Jeff Bezos. You mm -hmm. know, he's the richest man in the world now, or one of them. And uh, I think it was just like 15, 20 years ago, you know, Amazon was, it was kind of a joke. You know, people looked at Amazon and like, huh, Amazon, that's nothing compared to eBay. Amazon's such a stupid joke. What a waste. It's going to be gone in a second. And everybody doubted him. But do you think he surrounded himself with people who doubted him? No, he sat there and he, was, he made sure he either surrounded himself with positive people or he just cut that off completely because he didn't have time for that. He was, you got to stay focused on your dream. Not on the people around you that are trying to bring you down, most definitely. And they will try, yeah. consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. they, will, they will try. And it's like a plant too, right? It's proven that a plant grows better when it's loved and cared for with great energy around. And even when the energy is bad, things don't thrive as the same, just the same. And it's as great as they can be, right? That's proof. Uh -oh. That is the best proof in the world. What is good and what is bad and what should be and what shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my gosh how lovely that's such a great example mm -hmm. so just to end off with you guys you're both so amazing what do you think is some advice for somebody who knows they're in a toxic relationship that's not going to change and what is some advice for how to end that relationship how to cut that off in a positive way that's is that possible of course, it's not positive if you're dealing with somebody like that. Yeah, you know, to, uh, a few toxic relationships that I've been in in my life and I needed to get away from, I just left. And it was very sad because the son was watching me pack up all my stuff with my sister's husband. Mm -hmm. He's six, seven. I brought him with me. And I felt bad for the son. Oh, you're leaving my father. But there's, I watch movies sometimes and they say, or real life, I hear the, 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 the guy says, well, let's just say goodbye. Or she said, just come by and say goodbye. Or she says, I'm, I'll come by and pick up my stuff. No, no, don't do that. Leave, go, just cut it like that. It's just got to be cut. You know, I admire my sister so much because I don't know, 10 years, eight years ago, she completely cut my mother and me from, from her life. Yeah. Me because I'm, I was with my mother, you know, and she just didn't want anything. And plus she and I had our own issues. We both will say that, you know, she's just, I don't know, but you know, we both have issues with each other. And she said she does not want my mother to, her mother, my, our mother was negatively affecting her marriage, her mother, you know, her, ch her child, the way she mothers her child. And why would you do that? It, you know, she, I admire my sister for that. She was like, wait a minute. I have a toxic person. I made vows to my husband, mm -hmm. not this woman mom go I never want to speak to you again and that's exactly what she said and she turned to her husband who she made vows with to love cherish honor and support not to her mother and she is she's still married her daughter's 18 mm. I give my sister such credit we've never spoken to this day she's never spoken to my mother nothing never oh. wow and I so yeah go on Nani hun like you were saying, I, I just want to touch up on that point. You said, you know, when somebody goes, hey, just come over, grab your stuff or just come over, do this. 
um, you know, if you have the ability to just leave, that is the best thing you could do. I, I've been in situations where I, I, I ended a relationship and the person was like, hey, I have your phone and I have your iPod. This is back in the day when iPods were a thing. And they're like, I have your phone, your iPod. You can't go. You have to stay here and talk to me. And, you know, right away without even thinking. And I was young when this happened, you know, so uh, like a teenager. And I remember just thinking that phone and that iPod I mean, and that was kind of my life as a, as a you know, kid in high school. That's everything. Year old, yeah. But I just knew right away without even thinking that means nothing compared to my sanity and what you're taking from me right now. And I know if I stay, I'm jeopardizing my mental health. And that is far more important than any iPod or phone. And I looked at her and I go, you know what? You can keep it. And I just walked right out and I just left. I'm not going to argue with you and continue this because that is what they want so bad. Oh, I have something yours. Either come here and get it. And then they're going to trap you in more conversation and, and keep you like that and, and prolong this, this prison relationship. Yep. Uh, or, or men with sex or girl, you know, the men will call the girls over. You, I want to have sex. Oh my God. That means we're getting back together. No, it means he's just horny. He's and it's a release. He doesn't want to get back together. So don't go over there. You know, I mean, I know we're women. We're so nurturing. We love them. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just mom, so miserable. You were also telling me a story how uh, this, this woman broke up with her boyfriend and he goes, just come over real quick for like, you know, one last tea or to get your stuff or something like that. So she goes, okay, I'll come over just for one last tea. And then he killed her. And that was, and that was that. And then, you know, he goes to jail and he doesn't care at that point. And, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's an extreme like that um, all the time, or even if th that's going to be the case, but just, you know, know that either they're going to, you know, destroy you mentally or, you know, potentially take your life. These toxic people don't know what's going on in their own brain. So the best thing you could do is remove yourself. And if you can just mm -hmm. bail out, remove your things, just go, whatever you can do to cut them off. Yeah. And um, sometimes they're, and sometimes if we're talking real toxic and a breakup where these people are dangerous and desperate and a desperate person is a dangerous person. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Very much so. And, you and know, also, um, wait, I, I saw a good quote. Sorry, guys. Uh, just tell yourself this. If you love the wrong person so much, imagine how much you can love the right person. <laughs> I love that. That's really good. Yeah, that helps. And another way to know if this is a bad guy, you know, and should I break up with him? I don't know. He's nice to me. Sometimes ask yourself, would you want your daughter with this man? That's a really good indicator of, no, nah, I would not want my daughter to go out with this guy. Then why are you with him? Break mm -hmm. up with him. Like Marcus, I would, my son loves, he's so happy that I, I'm with a guy like, what did I send you? I sent, I took a screenshot of a little it's note a, he left me. Yeah, you just sent me a little note today of, uh, of something Marcus left you. It was really cute. It was so sweet. Uh, you know, and I sent it to my son because I'm like, look at the type of man I am with. Aren't you so happy? Because the last thing this child would want or any child is to see their mother with some loser that's making her cry, feeding her, ignoring her, you know, it's not the guy's fault. It's the girls just get away from him and find a man that does treat you right. Yeah. And I think like you both said in the last video too, it's about appreciating the good relationships too and the people who do treat you right and being grateful for those, right? And nurturing those and focusing mainly on those and then you'll get more of those absolutely exactly i mean that's one of the best ways i feel like to avoid toxic relationships is to focus on the the beautiful relationships and the healthy ones and to give those all your time and attention and if you just focus on those then you know you <laughs> don't deal with negativity bad. <laughs> yeah no I, I love it i i love it that that's beautiful that was that's absolutely right <laughs> thank you well thank you both so much for doing this and if anyone's wondering you can find kara on the healthy life youtube channel and you're on Instagram as well. And Juliano, can anyone find you anywhere? Do you have a website? I mean, you're so amazing. People are going to wonder where you are. <laughs> they can find me at Nature's Wildberry. Uh, we have an Instagram um, and, uh, and a website. And you guys are welcome to contact me through that anytime at naturewildberry.com. 
Okay. You need your own YouTube channel, though. Yeah, yeah. that makes you sound very YouTube. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you need a YouTube. You're just so wise, so calm, and well spoken. Oh, well, thank you so much. You know, I, I should start a YouTube. Maybe I'll, I'll give one a go and I'll, I'll give it a start, and then you guys can find me there. Yeah, so. definitely. Please do. Thank you, yeah. Jillian. It was sweet. Thank you both so much. Likewise. Okay. Let's keep in touch. Yeah, Bye, honey. Keep in touch. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.